ignite a rebellion. All it takes is a single spark. The saga continues on Disney XD. Star Wars Rebels this fall on Disney XD. Hey guys, Seaman 55 actually not being on camera for once. Uh, I know my mic is shitty. You're just gonna have to deal with it for right now. I I, I want to get a better mic at some point, but let's just get on with this and see how it goes. Anyway. Uh, we are here to talk about two things. I actually found some rumors that I think are kind of interesting to talk about for episode 7. And also, you know, to talk about my opinions on episode 7 as a whole, since I never really gave any thoughts on it when it was first announced. Uh, but I think enough's here to actually give an opinion. Uh, in terms of the show that's been announced called Star Wars Rebels, well, we're pretty much gonna go over the characters first, just to get them out of the way. Uh, and then I'll go over all my thoughts on all the characters. I'm just gonna explain every, uh, character in the details I've found. And I'll link to the videos, uh, on the Star Wars channel that I got. So I will, uh, link you to all of them so you can watch them and see them for yourself. The first character, and possibly the most interesting one we're gonna look at, is Kanan Jarrus. I am sorry if I fucked up the names, I'm probably gonna be doing that throughout the rest of the video. Anyway, he's going to be a human Jedi uh, who survived Order 66, and he's going to be somewhat more of the cowboy Jedi. I actually like that. That sounds interesting. He's also going to be in hiding, so he's not going to be using his lightsaber as much at the start of the series as he probably is going to be later in the series. He's actually going to be sticking to a blaster, which uh, it's interesting. Sounds interesting. Uh, I, I'd like—I always like to see if there were other Jedi's that survived Order 66 besides Yoda and Obi Wan. Uh, I don't really know if uh, any others that survived Order 66, so... Because uh, I don't really read the expanded universe, so if anyone says there's other Jedi, I believe you. I just have not really seen much of the... Uh, oh yeah, there was that one Jedi in Force Unleashed that survived, but then he died. <laughs> um, he sounds interesting. He sound, He's actually going to be uh, more of a cowboy. That sounds interesting. We haven't really seen a cowboy Jedi in uh, that. Uh, in Star Wars, so that sounds interesting. He's also going to be have a student called Ezra Bridger. Anyway, uh, next is Ezra Bridger. He's going to be a, uh, a little pit pocket, small time thief. Uh, he's going to be the kid of the group as well. All I'm hoping is that he's not going to be annoying, but he shouldn't be. He didn't sound annoying in the video that he was shown in. So yeah, that's pretty much all I can say. He's going to be the apprentice, and yeah, nothing really much to say about that. Anyway, now on to the next character, Hera Sindala. I'm really fucking up a lot of these names. <laughs> She's going to be the owner and the pilot of Ghost, uh, so yeah. Oh, she didn't acquire the ship legally. Well, that's actually going to be kind of interesting. She's pretty much going to be the voice of reason of the group, uh, nothing wrong there. Uh, uh, Zeb, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his last name, he's just, uh, I'm just going to call him Zeb. He is going to be the muscle of the group, and he's actually voiced by Stephen Blum. You know, the guy who voices Spike in Cowboy Bebop and Tom in, uh, in, uh, Toonami. He also voices Wolverine and Wolverine the X-Men and Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Now that sounds interesting. I, I really, I, I, I think Stephen Blum's one of my, uh, one of the best voice actors, uh, for most animated shows. Because his role as Spike, especially, is just really, really awesome. So, uh, can't wait to see Zeb because of that. You know, Stephen Blum, great voice actor. Uh, yeah. Then there's Sabine Wren who is pretty much just going to be the, uh, she's pretty much going to be the weapons expert of the group. However, what makes her a bit interesting that she's actually a Mandalorian, and she's going to be an artist. Not, you know, not an actual artist, like a graffiti artist, you know, spraying graffiti on the walls and all that. That sounds cool. I'm interested to see where that character goes. And then there's Chopper, who is pretty much the droid who, uh, hates all organics. Again, interesting. Uh, 
yeah, nothing really to say. She's just gonna be the droid. The ghost they're gonna be flying in is Ghost. That is what the ship is called. Uh, nothing really to say about that, except the ship does look pretty cool. I do like the design of it. And pretty much what it's going to be about is they're going to be outrunning the Empire and going up against the Empire. I don't really know what the overall plot's going to be. Uh, they, I, they haven't really announced one, obviously. And, yeah, it's going to be airing sometime in 2014, I believe, anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is going to be airing at fall 2014. So, yeah, it's going to be airing on Disney XD because Star Wars is owned by Disney now. So, yeah, that's pretty much my opinion and, and as a whole the show does look pretty interesting uh let's take something new uh and i'd like to see where disney goes with this uh i hope they don't like pull any punches just you know just because it's for kids you know i'm not saying it has to be like bloody and gory or anything no star wars is never bloody and gory but I i'm hoping it's not going to end up like you know, Avengers, or Avengers Assemble. Like, I, I don't think it will. This show does look like it has a lot of promise, but uh, I'm just hoping they don't go that direction because Disney hates adults or something like that. I hope it's like a show kind of like Avengers Earth by its heroes where it's for kids, but it can also be for adults. So, like, uh, adults and teenagers could watch it as well. Uh, and another thing, don't cancel it. <laughs> God damn it, you already did it with Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Tron Uprising, and Motor City. Do not cancel your damn show. <laughs> just, uh, just gonna say that now. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much my opinions on the show. And, uh, now I will get back to you on the Episode 7 stuff. On camera. Cut. Back. And on camera this time. Uh, anyway, uh... I guess I'll give you my thoughts on what's already been announced. Uh, for one thing, J.J. Abrams is directing Star Wars, Episode 7. You could not have picked a better director, besides maybe Joss Whedon, but Joss Whedon's on Avengers, so... <laughs> yeah, that's just... that's perfect. You know, J.J. Abrams, I, I love the first two Star Trek films. Well, first two. Well, the, the most recent two. Not, obviously, like, the first couple... Star Trek films. I'm talking about the more recent ones. Star Trek 09 and Star Trek Into Darkness. I, I, I thought those two films were really, really awesome. So, I can't wait to see what he does with uh, Star Wars Episode 7. So, J.J. Abrams, you know, he knows his stuff. And he's actually a Star Wars fan, so, I you know, he's got to be feeling some pressure. But I, I really hope that he does a great job. And I think he, he's the perfect director for this sort of thing. Uh, another thing I... Uh, I do hope for is, uh, from what I've heard, uh, actually, no, this is true, uh, Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, and Carrie Fisher are going to be returning, uh, as Luke, Han, and Leia, I presume. Honestly, I wouldn't mind it so much if Han and Leia were just background char characters, like, you know, they don't have to appear in cameos, they can appear in, like, supporting roles, but they should be, like, major characters. The only one I think that should really be a major character is Luke, because he can be the mentor to the protagonist. Whether that protagonist would be Luke's son or not, uh, I won't really know. I would actually like it to focus on a different Jedi, someone who's not a part of the Skywalker family, and Luke just finds her. Who knows, maybe it will be Mara Jade and Luke's kid, and maybe they'll bring Mara Jade into the main universe and not just the expanded universe. Also, speaking of the expanded universes, all that stuff in the for the books and everything, like the whole Luke turning evil because the Emperor clone and all that, is all that non-canon now? Like, take Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, for example. Like, I, I know I said I did like the film, and I do like the film, but one of the things that did bother me at first, and still kind of does, is old Indiana Jones. It kind of bothers me. I get annoyed by it a little bit. It doesn't bother me for too long, because I do get into the adventure, and I do still like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull a lot, but I will admit, uh, okay, you, may, you might not want to do that again. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll let you go this one time, because it was pretty entertaining, and I did like it, but don't do it again. Uh, and I don't think they should do it with Star Wars. <laughs> In terms of uh, some new actors, uh, from what I've heard, uh, and I, this is purely going on rumors now. Now, I don't know if any of these are true. If they are, leave it in the comments whether they're true or not. Uh, Adam Driver, I believe that's his name, is going to be the main villain. And he's going to be somewhat like Darth Vader. He's going to be like a Darth Vader kind of villain. Now, if this Darth Vader-like villain, you know, 
it is going to be like have a completely different motive and like I, I don't want it to be just another jedi that turns to the dark side or han's kid that turns to the dark side or luke's kid or whatever i don't i don't care i don't want another one of those why, why don't you make like a sith one, like something like um force unleashed um force unleashed made uh i forget what uh the person uh, the girl's name was she had a bunch of spikes on her head i think it was dark uh, pho phobias, phobias. I think that was her name. I, I, I really gotta. Uh, I, I, you know, do something like her. And there were other, there were, there wasn't just her. That there were also some other Sith in Force Unleashed that weren't a part of the Empire. You know, why don't we get one of those being the main villain? They could have their own story. You know, I don't mind if it's gonna be Vader like in the thing that oh, they're more machine than man. But I don't want it to be exactly like Vader or even resemble Vader. You know, General Grievous was, uh, was, uh, more machine than man, and he wasn't anything like Vader. It was just... a douche. That's what I got from him in the Clone Wars cartoon and in Episode 3. He's just a cowardly douchebag. That's all he is. With four lightsabers. Admittedly, I do like General Grievous. I think he's kind of a cool character. Anyway, uh, on to the other rumor, and this is the one that I'm mostly sure is fake, but I don't know... For sure. From what I've heard, and I've heard this from a couple of websites, Emperor Palpatine is to be returning. Now, uh, I don't know if this is true. It's probably fake, and I, I think it is fake, because I don't see how he could return. I, I really don't want Emperor to be the main villain again. I, I in, fa in fact, that Adam Driver guy, if he's gonna be the main villain, make him be the main villain through episodes 7, 8, and 9. Don't make there be any Emperor Palpatine. I, I... I, I just want him to die in episode 6. Like, Ian McDermott was a great actor. Even in episode 3, I thought he was a real... He, I thought he was really good as, as the Emperor in episode 3, despite the really poor script at some points. No! Uh, that's pretty much the last rumor. I don't really want him to come back. I, I'd rather them try and think of a new villain. Here's the thing that I'm getting from them. We know, we fucked up with, you know, they, they fucked up with the prequels. We're gonna try again and do it right this time. And I respect that, but I don't think that's the right decision. Just try and, you know, just do something different. You know, have, focus, have it focus on Luke's kids, or have it focus on a different protagonist that's not even a Skywalker, but, you know, Luke finds him and Luke trains him or something, you know. Heck, you don't even have to focus on the Skywalker family if you don't want to. You know, there, there's tons of potential that could be with the sequel. I, I'm just hoping it, for it to be good. You know, I know, I, I know for a fact it's gonna, it's gonna be better than the prequels because it's being made by J.J. Well, it's not being made by J.J. Abrams. It's being made by Disney, but J.J. Abrams is directing it. And if Disney doesn't limit him, and you know, J.J. Abrams get for the most gets for the most part not complete control, but a little more control than Disney does. You know, so he because he, he's he's was a big fan of Star Wars. He says he was a big fan of Star Wars, so, you know, I, I just hope he doesn't, like, try and fix the mistakes of the prequels, or try and redoes every, redo everything. No, just, just, you know, come up with something new. That's pretty much what I want to say about this, is just come up with something different and new. You know, obviously, keep the lightsabers, keep the planets, keep the star, you know, star destroyers that the Empire got destroyed, but, um, keep the X-Wings if you have to. Uh, keep the Rebel ships, you know, you just come up with something different. I, I don't necessarily mind the rebellions in this, to be honest, because I didn't think the rebellion could survive after all these years, just with different generals and stuff. So you can even have the rebellion come back, and the kid could, the the main, main protagonist could join the rebellion, or maybe he already was, you know, something like that. So that's it. What do you guys think should be in episode seven? I'm the CMH five. Signing out.